Okay, this is a worked example problem uh, from chapter one that hopefully will help you get through some of the homework assignments for the ENME 331 on the first homework assignment. And it relates to the fluid property of viscous shearing stress and how that can put a force on an object. It's meant to be uh, a, a relatively simple problem, but there are some complexities to setting it up and usually we find that the students um, trying to conceive exactly what this is saying is the hardest part, in, namely in getting it set up. So looking at the problem statement, the problem states that a pivot bearing, shown in the figure at the right, is used on the shaft of an electrical instrument and it is supported here by an oil with a given viscosity of mu equals 0.1 slugs per foot second. So let me write down here our givens and the first one is we have mu is equal to 0 0.01 slugs per foot second and there's a gap I'll call that gap B and that's 0 0.001 inches and this is between the shaft and the stationary base and looking at the figure we see that this is here is our value B and it's in sort of a conical cavity and they give the viscosity and they give the included angle in the figure there we'll call that theta is equal to 30 degrees so I'll label that as well theta is equal to 30 degrees and then I'll take the radius, capital R, from the center of that shaft to be 0.2 inches. So here we have R is equal to 0 0.2 inches. So right away we notice that the units here are not given consistent between all the various pieces of information. Um, and then moving on to the last sentence, we see determine the frictional torque on the shaft when it rotates at 5,000 RPM. So we're also given here that the rotational rate omega is equal to 5,000 revolutions per minute. And we're asked to find then what is the torque. Well, the torque is just simply the net torque resistance to spinning the shaft about its axis here. So we can also indicate that there will be a Um, a, a torque about this axis, I call that capital T. Um, so there are now, I think I want to point out several key concepts that are important to getting this problem in terms of setting it up. Okay, so let me enumerate those. Concept one. Okay, and this concept is the stress exerted by the fluid on the surface is due to the viscous shearing force. Namely, in this simple introductory chapter, we're told that this is sort of a distinguishing feature of fluids and that the steer stress tau is equal to mu times du dy. Now this is not a, a general expression, this is specific to some uh, exact cases. But we note from this that, first of all, we have to ask ourselves, well, what is the velocity gradient here? What does this du dy represent, and particularly in the context of this problem? So we ask ourselves, what is y in this case? And then what does u as a function of y look like? All right, so if you think about this for a second, in this particular in any general problem, we don't know that maybe necessarily, or it's perhaps it's given to us. And they don't state it in the problem statement. But in this chapter, when we have a very thin film, um, it's reasonable to assume that that is a linear velocity profile. As we get further in the course, we'll be relaxing this. But that's going to be an assumption here. So let's put that down. Assumption that 
u is equal to some constant a times y. And now here what we're going to have to say is that y is a coordinate relative to the normal surface of these walls in here. Um, and that's because that's the direction in which we have this thin gap. And if we want the stress on this inner spindle, we have to evaluate that on the surface of the spindle. Okay. Um, so the next concept related to this, concept two, is what is the velocity on the surface of that spindle? Okay. Okay, so if we're looking at, let me draw this cone down here. And here's our point. And then we have a, a wall here. And this is the axis. And as this is rotating around its axis omega, let's look at the point here, here, and here. Three different locations on that cone. And what is the velocity on the surface of that cone? Well, we notice that they're all three at different radii. If we call that variable distance from the center axis r, the velocity on the surface of the cone, and let's call it u sub s, is just going to be equal to omega times r. And if we were to look at the velocity profiles then going across the gap at each of these points, and going into the board here as this spins around, on this top the velocity profile would be quite long. At this middle point, it would be less. And at this bottom one, it would be moving very slowly. Uh, and then it would be zero, of course, right at the point. So we have these three different magnitudes because we're at different locations on the cone, and that's different radii away from the center. So the velocity on the spindle here, u sub s, is equal to omega times r. And if we take the y-coordinate to be fixed, here this is the outer surface of the wall, and this is the top, and moving in this direction is y, so that would be going from the stationary wall towards the cylinder then we know that tau is going to be given by mu times du dy. But here, u as a function of y is going to be equal to u sub s times y divided by b, right? That's a linear velocity profile. It goes to 0 at y equals 0, and it goes to us at y equals b. And so this is going to be equal to simply omega r times y divided by b. And now if I calculate here du dy, this is simply going to be equal to omega times r divided by b. And actually it's a constant across the gap. It's the same magnitude at both the outer wall and on the inner spindle. So we could then plug that into our expression here for du dy, and that will give us tau is equal to mu times omega r divided by b. All right, so we see now that the shear stress is going to vary depending on where we are on the surface of the cone. We're going to have a bigger shear stress up near the top and a smaller shear stress down near the bottom. All right, so the next important concept here, concept three,
has to do with the fact that this stress is not a constant value on the surface. I can't simply take the total area of that cone and multiply by a single value of the shear stress and get my total stress. It's, we have a variable stress and it's also a variable moment arm to where that stress is located. All right, so the concept here, let's to phrase it succinctly, is on a small surface where R is about constant, there we can write a constant value for the torque. So let me write that out. And as a result, we can write its contribution to the torque is just given by the stress at that point times the area of a ring surrounding that. So here if I am at a particular arbitrary location on the surface, it's a small little element of area on this at a given radius and that the total contribution to the torque for that dt is going to be equal to the radius times the net force acting on that ring which is going to be the radius times the shear stress we just calculated tau times the area dA. Alright, so now the area of this ring dA well, that is something that we have to work out from the geometry. So if we look at this is sort of a, a blown up version of that small little area of that ring. And let's call this length dL. There's our center axis. And this is a distance r. And moving in the radial direction, this is L, then that ring covers an area that we can call dr. Let me write this a little bit neater. Okay, so if we're looking for the surface area of this whole ring here, it's got a circumference that is 2 pi times r, and if we multiply it times the length of that strip, because it's canted out at an angle, that would be times dl, because it's a small little differential element of area. Um, so this is equal to dA. And dL, we have a relationship here. If I have a triangle um, where this is theta, this is dL, and this is dr. We need to get this in terms of r because that's our a more convenient variable here. Then here we know that dl times sine of theta is equal to dr. So we can solve dl as dr over sine theta or this is equal to 2 pi r times dr divided by sine theta. So going back to this expression over here, we have this is r times tau times 2 pi r dr divided by sine theta. So that becomes r squared. And the last concept that we need, and then I'll start a fresh slide, and this puts it all together, concept 4, And this is that the total torque is just the integral of all the contributions of the torque on those little pieces of the rings. So total torque T is equal to the integral of dT over the whole surface. All right. So now let's put this together on the next page. We'll keep the background here the same. So what are we going to, let me highlight the elements here that we need. We figured out what the shear stress is on the wall. We reduced that expression here to 
torque is equal to mu omega r over b. We're going to need to substitute that into here for tau. So the differential torque dt is going to be given by, let me write that here on the next page, So, let's see. DT is equal to we had the radius times the force, which was mu times omega times R divided by B times the area which was 2 pi r divided by sine theta times dr. Okay, and so the total torque T is equal to the integral of dt, which is the integral, now we're integrating with respect to r here, so we go from 0 to capital R, and I can simplify this to 2 pi mu times omega, I'm grouping together the constants, divided by b sine theta, and now I have r cubed dr. So this is equal to 2 pi mu omega divided by b sine theta, and then we integrate with respect r cubed dr, that's simply r to the fourth divided by 4, evaluated from 0 to capital R. And so the total torque then ends up becoming pi times mu omega divided by 2b sine theta times r to the fourth. Alright, and that's the total torque. So now all we need to do is to plug in the proper numbers here. Um, first of all, we'll have to calculate uh, to get everything in the proper units. So here we have omega is equal to 5,000 revs per minute. We want that in radians per second. So if we say we have for every one minute is of course 60 seconds and then there's 2 pi radians per revolution and when you calculate that out that's 524 radians per second and if we convert these into feet as we plug in we'll get the total torque T here we'll have pi times 0 0.01 slug per foot second times 524 radians per second times a radius of 0 0.2 divided by 12 and that's uh, to the fourth power and that should be in feet so that's going to be feet to the power 4 and then we divide this by 2 and then this is 0 0.001 divided by 12 to give us B in terms of feet. And then we have sine of 30 degrees. I realized I made a mistake here. This is actually the diameter I need to put in the radius, 0 0.1 divided by 12. And if you work that out, that should give you 9.53 times 10 to the minus 4 and that would be slug feet per second squared times feet or slug feet squared per second which is a foot pound which is the units of torque. So it takes a very small torque to rotate that. That's a, an example of a lubricated bearing. Alright, just to recap the main important points here that you should um, consider are these concepts. 
first of all that the stress is related to the strain rate by this equation here. You need to take the derivative of the fluid and evaluate that on the surface. Second, realize that the velocity on that surface is varying, so the shear stress is varying, and likely also because there are different positions on there, the amount of contribution to the torque, the moment arm, is varying for where that stress is acting, and so that all has to be taken into account by doing an integral. And setting up these integrals we find is something that students could use a bit of practice in. So that's one reason why we did this example and gave you a similar problem for your homework. Thanks.